A mass spectrometer is an instrument that can be used to analyze the composition of a sample material, such as a new medicine or a meteorite. The first step is to ionize the sample. Then we send the charged particle into the mass spectrometer for analysis. The three main parts of the mass spectrometer we study in this course are accelerator, velocity selector, and the circular motion part. Suppose we're looking at the positive Q. First, we apply a voltage to accelerate the charge. For this part, we can use the conservation of energy. The kinetic energy gain comes from the potential energy loss, which means that the increase in 1 half mv squared equals to Q times V. Then the charge enters a region with both a uniform magnetic field and a uniform electric field. In this region, only those charges with a certain velocity can go straight through the region undeflected. The positive Q can go undeflected because the magnetic force and the electric force are equal and opposite, so they can cancel each other. The magnetic force in this case is QVB times the sine, the angle between the V and the B. V goes that way, B goes into the paper, so the angle between V and the B is 90 degrees, and sine 90 degrees is 1. And the electric force of a charge Q inside the electric field E is F equals to QE. So the Qs cancel, and that means that we get VB equals to E, so the velocity must be E divided by B. So only those particles with the, the exact velocity E over B will go straight undeflected. Not only the two forces have to be equal in magnitude, they also have to be opposite so they can cancel. But if the magnetic field in this region go into the paper, what must the direction of electric field be in this region? Let's first find the direction of the magnetic force. It's a V cross B. We use the right-hand rule to find the direction. So it's a V cross B. The magnetic force goes up that way. That means the electric force must go in the opposite direction. If a positive charge experiences a downward electric force, that means the charge must be in an electric field in which direction? Since the charge is a positive Q, that means the electric field must be in the same direction as the electric force. So in this region, the electric field must go down this way. The third part here is a region with only a uniform magnetic field. This time, there is no electric force to cancel the magnetic force. So the positive Q does a circular motion. See if you can draw the path of the positive Q inside this magnetic field. The positive charge comes in with a velocity in that direction. So we can use the right-hand rule, the V cross B, so the magnetic force goes up that way. Magnetic force going up means this positive Q is going to curve up that way for circular motion. After exactly half a circle, the charge hits the screen over here. If there is a fluorescent coating, the screen would light up right there. So we can measure the radius of the circular motion. Or perhaps the positive Q hits a detector over here so we can get the radius. For the circular motion part, we can write the force equation. Net force equals to ma. And this net force is the magnetic force, which is QVB times the sine, the angle between V and the B, which is 90 degrees. And sine 90 degrees is 1. And this should equal to ma. Because the particle is doing circular motion, the acceleration is V squared over R. So we can cancel one of the V's over here. And we can get Q times B equals to M times V over R. And usually, 
we like to get this uh, Q over M, the charge to mass ratio. The Q over M, the charge to mass ratio is uh, V over RB. We know the speed from the velocity selector part. We can measure the radius of this circular motion. And we know how strong a magnetic field we apply in this region. Therefore, we can have this charge to mass ratio for the particle.